So what is the one single most harmful belief that comes from following the law of attraction? Good question, huh? Let's talk about that. Now we all know the law of attraction basics. What you think about, you bring about. What you focus on is what you're attracting into your life. How can this be bad? Well, if you are living a life that currently is fraught with difficulties, it becomes really, really easy to start blaming yourself for them. If you are living a life where you are dealing with poverty, where you're dealing with depression, mental health issues, bad work conditions, physical illnesses with the whole COVID thing going on, it becomes really, really easy to start saying, I must have somehow attracted this into my life. Now, it'd be really easy for me to think that way. I had the plague twice, for heaven's sake. I have been homeless. I have been dumped on. I have dealt with suicidal ideation and depression. I have been in the dregs. But none of those were what I was attracting to. Some of those were the side effects of other things that I had attracted in with um, not understanding what all the side effects would be. When I attracted in my last husband, I certainly was not thinking that he would end up with me losing all of my possessions, losing custody of my children, and being homeless. But all of that can be directly attributed to his actions. Does that mean that I attracted homelessness? Does that mean I attracted losing custody of my kids? Not in the least. So how is it that we work through all of this? I mean, if what you think about is what you bring about and then these horrible things happen, does that mean you were thinking about them on a subconscious level? Not exactly. You see, before we start practicing calling things into our life, it is incumbent on us to make sure that we have dealt with the dark side, that we have looked at our shadows, that we have done the healing that needs to be done to clear out all the mental clutter. When you don't do that, then that stuff has a tendency to multiply on you until you can no longer ignore it. Going back to my last husband, if he had not destroyed my life, if he had not had everything ripped away from me and left me living in a van. I would not have achieved the mental clarity to start the journey that I'm on now. I would not have the self-confidence and the belief in myself that I could help other people to be coaching people now. So really, I have to thank him for bringing about this utter destruction because that other destruction is what triggered the room for me to grow as a person. This is why when you're manifesting anything, you have to be very, very clear in exactly how you want things to, to come in. If you are saying, I want to manifest growing as a person, and you just put it out like that, the universe is going to put you on the fastest, most accelerated path to growing as a person. And unfortunately, that's going to involve complete and utter catastrophic removal of all the things that have held you back from that growth. Now, a lot of those things you can recover later on. I currently have a home. I'm no longer living in a van. I have a fantastic relationship with my kids and I get to see my grandson every day. Those are all wonderful things. But that four year time period where I lost everything. Well, I was had to be put on a lot of medication so that I could reach a point of stability enough to start doing the growth I needed to do. It was really bad. In no way did I want to lose my children. I would never have wanted to lose my children, but it had to happen 
for me to be able to focus on me for change instead of focusing on them. I had to have the room to grow that I could not have when I was in a house full of people. It's cold, it's hard, and it's what happens when you just put out to the universe, I want to grow, and don't specify what the cost you're willing to pay is. You see, everything we do, everything we manifest, everything we call into us, does have a cost associated with it. You can either prepare for that cost by clearing out the clutter beforehand and making room for what's coming in, or the universe will do it for you. So what do you do if you are stuck in a pattern of unhappiness, depression, bad luck, just, you know, general life taking a dump on you? What do you do in that situation? How do you turn that around? Well, the first thing you do, accept responsibility for the parts that are your fault and refuse to accept responsibility for the parts that aren't. If someone else has totally and utterly betrayed you, I accept responsibility for allowing this person into my life. Their behavior is on them. I accept responsibility for having married my last husband. Him betraying me, that's all him. That is not my fault in the least. See, when you learn where the boundaries of you are, then that allows you to cut out a lot of negativity. I accept responsibility for trusting someone I should not have trusted. That person betraying my trust is not my fault. When you accept that responsibility, that gives you freedom because you're no longer tied down by the guilt of things you did not do. You're no longer tied down by the anxiety cycle of what did I do to deserve this? You're no longer going in circles and chasing your tail and trying to figure out what you could have done differently because all of that's in the past and there is nothing you can do to physically change the events of the past. You can change, you can reframe them. You can change your approach to them. You can change your understanding of them. That's not going to bring back the things that have been lost. However, that does open you up to find the lessons in the loss. Find the lesson that is in the negative, the negativity. And that lesson could be anything. I've had lessons in the last, you know, five years of finding resilience within myself, trusting myself, believing that I really, really could come back from the brink by myself, that I did not need someone else to provide a framework for me to grow on, that I did not need to have an extra, external source of validation for me to find who I was as a person, that I did not need external sources of love and affection for me to find those qualities within myself. You see, when you've lost all the externals and you go within, you have a choice. You can either give in to despair and guilt and just give up, or you can find those lessons. You can accept those lessons and you can let those lessons force you to grow. Growth hurts. Growth always hurts. I don't know if anyone else remembers this, but I remember when I was a kid, I would get these growing pains in my legs when the long bones were growing, and oh, it hurt to even walk for days. But growing pains are a part of growing. They are a part of the process. And when you can accept that pain as part of the process, when you can accept the need for it, you can then move past it and continue to grow in ways that you never expected. Five years ago, no, let's be accurate, four years ago when he left, if you had told me I would be in a place where I could help other people face their shadows and begin 
moving into their own growth phases, I would not have believed you. Because four years ago when he left, I was literally begging not to be institutionalized because if I was, I would lose my job and therefore lose my health insurance. I have come a very long way in four years because I learned to grow. I can help other people come a very long way very quickly because I can help them learn to accept and grow. It's been a convoluted path, but it's been a very needed one. I'm Marna. Thank you for joining me, and I will see you on the next video.